This week on Silly Point, I get Jalen out. Sana says Chairman has a shave. And Tyler misses a straight one. Hello, and welcome to the return of Silly Point. It must have been about three months uh, since we last did a Silly Point. And in that time, we've been planning. We've, uh, we've been planning something bigger and better. And this, hopefully, is the result. So welcome. Yeah, thanks, T. And um, well, hopefully everyone's been coping with, with the lockdown. Uh, it's been obviously very frustrating and more so now that the cricket season has, well, theoretically started. Um, but I know that a lot of people have been watching, watching the channel and watching the archive footage. And I've been putting out 10 minute uh, edited versions of, of a lot of the games and trying to mirror actually um, the time of the year when they would have come out. So that's going to carry on. But it prompted us, didn't it, T, to, um, to come up with a new feature in Silly Point uh, called Back to the Archive. Um, one, one of many new features, might I uh, add. Absolutely right. We're, we're just going to plow straight into it. So here's the first, the first of our Back to the Archive features. So the first of our Back to the Archive features, Englefield Green on a Sunday. Um, now, this is quite a new team that we've played as Sanderstead. A wonderful team, brilliantly village, wonderful bunch of blokes. Um, and this, uh, this game, as you probably realise, happened quite early on in the season. So there were a number of just brilliant parts to the game. The first ball, in fact, which uh, I'm sure you're going to see, was a fantastically uh, hideous yet brilliant no ball that, that went over the batsman's head. And it was, it was excellent, wasn't it, Dan? It was, and, and indeed, T, can I just add that um, uh, they sent us an email before the game and said, you know, we think we can out-village you. Um, and, and, and so, the, you know, the, the, the scene was set, if you like. Uh, and, um, yeah, I think, I think they, they, they did out-village out us, and it was, uh, it was a great fun there, game. There oh. was, it was a, it was a battle, battle of villages. There was village coming from both sides, and it was like toing and throwing, and it was fantastic. Yeah, and um, but in amongst all that villageness, um, you, you actually, uh, I think you had a couple of tough deliveries first up, but um, then, you know, I think you, I think you batted pretty well. We've got a little, little montage of uh, some of the finer um, shots, uh, shall we call them? It's mainly you just slogging long hops. But uh, uh, so, so how how was it? How was that innings? You know, brushing off those uh, early season cobwebs with some filthy deliveries paired with an equally sticky track. Somehow made it work, I think, and got some sort of a total. But, I mean, the cherry on top, it was going to happen, wasn't it? It ended in at least a village way with, I, I mean, I thought it was a half tracker that didn't bounce very much. Watching back, it was probably a half volley. Um, but, but clean bowled by a straight one, which is, yeah. which is not, not always a good way to go, Dan. No, 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 I, I can imagine. There was uh, there was a really interesting moment in the game when when you were actually batting at the crease, T, and it's it's probably uh, you know I've described it as village redefined. Yeah. Um, so we're playing the clip. Just talk us through it, mate. Talk us through it. I mean, if you if you want, however long it is, fifteen seconds worth of village cricket, one thing after the other, then this this is the clip to watch. I I welcome anyone who has anything better. I mean, it started with a. a not the best delivery. Skied, not too high. Some would call it a simple catch. Was it inevitable it was going to be dropped? Maybe. Of course it was dropped. Then what happened? There was an, an overthrow, missed run out. Then the return throw hit the man who was mourning his own drop catch on the head. And it was one of those scripts that you just couldn't have written. It, it was funny and funny. And being out there, one thing happened after the other and it was funny. And then when it finished with the, the chap who dropped the catch getting hit on the head, that was, that was, it, was it was genius. And I think he was the captain. And also I think it was something like uh, he dropped four or five catches in, in that game. <laughs> um, but also caught, caught a pretty good one. Uh, he, he, got, yeah. he, he caught one off, off Lemon. Just extraordinary. Just extraordinary. Um, and, and talking yes. of catches or drops, the other moment that that is hilarious Matt Harris came on the bowl one of their guys hit uh, he started to hit the ball well actually in the chase and uh, he hit one up and and Lance Harris the Cornish Coley Matt's father was on the long on boundary 
And uh, well, actually, he was about seven or eight yards in from the long on boundary, and he just went to yeah. take the catch, <laughs> dropped it, and then, as you can see here, rather sheepishly signalled six, um, <laughs> and, and it, it <laughs> and it wouldn't have been anyway. Uh, it was. Okay, uh, it's probably not not like Lance to drop catches, really, is it? Either he's, no, he's absolutely got quite a safe pair of hands. Very safe yeah. pair of hands, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely extraordinary. Maybe, maybe it was because Matt was was bowling. Probably, know. we'll have to ask him next time we get him on. We'll ask him what happened there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The other interesting moment was, um, you know, we we just started uh, a partnership with Pilgrim Brewery um, down in down in Rygate. Excellent beers, and uh, they were going to put an advertising boarding up around the ground somewhere, and and it, it hadn't turned up. In fact, still hasn't turned up. And we thought, well, you know, uh, we've got to have them represented somewhere. So you, you took a pint out with you and put it in the helmets position be behind you. And uh, it was it was the only thing to do, I think. Yeah, what a wonderful idea. I wish it was appropriate to do that on a Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it probably isn't, is it? But, uh, May maybe not. Okay. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully gave them a little bit of exposure, paired with the fact it's actually wonderful beer. So it was nice to have that out there on a, on a warm day. Yeah. Moving on to the next part of the show called Ask the Player, where we get a selection of Sandersted's finest to answer what is deemed to be quite a simple question. Now, the question this week was, how would you describe Sandersted Cricket Club in three words? However, you'll realise that that's maybe not the simplest question because at least 50% of players don't know what three words actually means. So here's our next feature. Ask the player. Uh, the scenery. Lovely. Sunday cricket. <laughs> and the bar. Of course, the bar. Um, how would I describe Sunday Cricket Club? I would describe it as a drinking club with a cricket problem. Friendly. Safe. And... Oh, I don't know. Aesthetic. Passionate, fun and successful. Fun, friendly and village. Emphasis on village. Home, family and culture. Uh, my mates, my memories and being longer. But no, not being as long in the shower as Dana. I think it's got to be for me. It's like it's definitely a, a home from home. Um, yeah, definitely somewhere that's close to me personally. I'd have to say range of abilities because, quite frankly, there are some people there who just shouldn't be playing cricket and there are also some people there who should really be playing of a higher standard, such as myself. Brilliant. That was, that was really good, T. Um, you got the guys to sort of film those, those little clips by remote control on their phones. I love Greg's uh, description. We're a drinking club with a cricket problem. Um, yeah, no, yeah good. that really does sum us up. More than three words, but who cares? Who cares? I also love Jalen in the bath. <laughs> or yeah. Yeah. Jalen's, Jalen's clip of himself in the bath. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm he's been doing a lot of down. running. <laughs> a lot of running for charity. Did about 100 k yeah, last week. Very good. So very good. I guess he's having a lot of baths yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. um, but all, all in all, I, I, I think there were some fantastic responses there. And if, if you guys there, have any questions that you would like answered, then send them in and if, if they're good enough or bad enough or funny enough or, or brilliant enough, then they just might feature. So send them in. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, next up. What do you do with a man that can't bowl and can't bat? Well, of course, he is the man in the field, which is our next segment where we go to a player or a club member who's been set a task or talks to us a little bit about what they do. So this week's man in the field is our new club chairman, Rusty Carter. Um, Rusty was a brilliant cricketer in his day. Uh, Tyler, you, you would have played a few games with him. He really was quite yeah, awesome. Yeah, he was fantastic. Brother of, of Simon Carter, who's our new first team captain this year. Um, and Rusty also is a, he's a real odd job man. and. Um, uh, one of the things that he's been doing, you know, pre-season preparation, is doing a lot of work on the inside of our pavilion. We'll reveal all that at some point in the future. 
But whilst he was up there, I managed to grab him for a quick interview for Rusty to just tell us a little bit about, about you know, his vision and what he's up to. And, and uh, well, here it is. Uh, Rusty, welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm very well. I'm very well. And uh, we're here at the old sawmill, um, properly socially distanced. Uh, and it's an absolutely glorious day. Uh, Rusty, how are the preps going for the for the ground? Well, it's been a bit slow, but uh, actually it's going really well. The square, the ground, everything's taking shape and it's starting to look really good. So. Good. And the, and the track, do you think it's going to be the usual Somerset belter? It's going to be good. Um, yeah? Yeah, the new guys have done a lot of work on it. Bolly and his team and Christy and Danny, you see in the background, are working really hard. And, and what are your thoughts on, on cricket this season? Initially, we were hopeful of July from emails coming out and everything, but it's just going to be grateful to get anything, really. Yeah, I mean, the fans out there, as we all are, desperate to actually see some proper cricket uh, rather than me just churning out the archive. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not looking too, too, too clever, is it? It's not. Today would have been our um, first pre-season friendly against old Wimbledon. It would, wouldn't it? It would. And um, which would have been amazing exciting lovely day for it and we've got some we've picked up a few new players in the winter haven't we rusty we've we picked up a lot of players from sundays fourths thirds all the way up to the the twos and the ones and there's some exciting lads coming through um, there's some pace bowling coming through there is a bit of competition for for places some good bats as well actually yeah, absolutely and what people might not know is that uh, uh, you know you're simon carter's brother yeah he doesn't admit to it too often but yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah i am and what was the buzz like in the nets? It was amazing. I've got to say, that was the best nets I've possibly ever been involved with. That was good standard. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add? Just thank you to everyone. Apologies about the short hair. It's not the normal look. <laughs> um, but thank you to, to everyone who follows. Really looking forward to getting some cricket. Thanks to you for what you do. And uh, if we can get out there this year, it's going to be amazing. It, it will be. It will be. Oh, and um, uh, do you know... Cause, you had your head shaved to, did, to raise yes. some funds. Do you know how much we raised? Well, it was a hundred pounds gone in today, so that's taken us to the thousand pound mark. Brilliant! Which well is done, mate. Unbelievable. Yeah. And obviously, it didn't affect my look, so it was the ideal no. solution. No. <laughs> but keep well, everyone, and thank you very much. Very good. Thank you, mate. Cheers. And now it's time for the Sunset CC TV news. Breaking news down, just in. Absolutely. Christy and Amy have had a baby, which is absolutely fantastic. Six pounds, born two or three days ago, and has already been uh, up at the sawmill. So we have a new groundsman in the making. So many congratulations absolutely. to Christy and Amy. Um, fabulous news. Congratulations, Christy and Amy. Um, uh, I half expected the baby to pop out with glasses on, Dan, but that wasn't the case. Um, however, the parents do say it will be cutting grass by the time they're six months old. So that is exciting. Other news, uh, renovations are happening at the club, aren't they, Dan? Which is uh, they, they are. exciting. They are. We saw from Rusty's interview that he's been, uh, you know, he's been doing a lot of work on that um, with a bit of help from other people, but at sort of socially distanced uh, um, times and things like that. And yeah, a lot of work happening. It's going to look fa fabulous. It's looking great already. We will reveal that when we can um, when we can come out of the lockdown. Absolutely, I've, I've seen some spy shots, and it really is looking good. So mm -hmm. look forward to sharing that. It is. Um, and I think Dan, we should move on to our silly point. This is, of course, silly point, and we like to have a silly point to talk about, don't we? Yeah, we we absolutely do. And we thought that um, a sort of hot topic at the moment. Of course, everyone is asking. When are we going to be able to play cricket again? And you know, how is that going to happen when we do get to play cricket again? I mean, the answer is we don't know when. Um, but we've been having a little bit of a think about, about how it might happen and how socially distanced cricket might work. T. I have an idea, Dan. Hmm. I thought you would. Um, yeah. So every player has their own ball. Oh, yeah. And one by one, they come up to bowl bowl their ball and have to field their own bowling. So, for example, you might have Longcock come up with his own ball, yeah. chuck down a pie, which is inevitable, and yeah. it gets smashed and Longcock has to go and field it off his own bowling. Well, it, that wouldn't be hard. All he's got to do is pick it out of the hedge. <laughs> that, that, is, that is true. Um, how, however, 
a queue of bowlers, each with their own ball, job done. And, uh, yeah, but what about the keeper? Um, well, I mean, he has gloves on, so he might be protected from uh, anything that might be transmitted ah, via the but, ball. But Johnny Longcock's ball, smothered with Longcock germs, um, <laughs> uh, will obviously infect the gloves of the keeper. So, uh, you know, when Jacko comes on to bowl, not that, of course, Jacko would come on to bowl after Longcock, but hey, let's, uh, <laughs> let's run with it. Then, you know, Jacko's going to get a ball that goes into the keeper's gloves and that goes back to, uh, to him and, and bang, he's got, he's got Longcock's germs. Yeah, I mean, maybe the answer is 11 pairs of wicket-keeping gloves, one pair for each bowler. It would uh, be 10 pairs, bit, wouldn't it? Unless yeah, the keeper, of course, has to bowl. Tops, yeah, we don't usually have 10 bowlers, but yeah, you need half. No, no, no. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I guess the point is it's going to be quite uh, interesting and quite mm. difficult, but um, hopefully yeah. uh, it will remain safe and a little bit silly. Yes, uh, teas are also a problem as well, because obviously you can't eat with your, with your friends. So the answer is definitely bring your own packed lunch, you know, and you're going to get some contrasting meals, no doubt, but you'll have yeah. to bring what you want to eat, find somewhere on the field to sit and eat it, wave at your mate. Uh, and just enjoy your own spread. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true, that's true. Anyway, I think that's, um, um, that's enough of that silliness, isn't it? Yeah, so let's move on. Okay, another little mini feature that, that, that we're going to tack on to the end of the news is um, our comment of the week. We get loads of comments uh, below, um, below each, each YouTube video, uh, most of them really positive, some very funny comments, lots of regulars who keep commenting. Thank you very much. But we're going to feature a comment of the week which we think is either particularly funny topical or, or whatever and um, we got one here from Seb Chambers who said this came in last week he says shame cricket has been postponed to July the 1st at the latest nevertheless thanks for the timeless content to keep us sane during the lockdown um, so Seb thanks very much for that comment but uh, it's it's typical actually of many many comments uh, some actually more effusive than that saying how the content that we've put out and it's archive content has, has really helped people and um, uh, uh, we're really glad of that and indeed someone a journalist at the New Statesman picked up on exactly that point he actually contracted coronavirus was quite ill at, at home um, isolated himself and found the channel and uh, basically watched it for, for about two weeks and then he wrote a lovely article uh, I'll post a link below to it a really really Good article on how um, how you know our little brand of, of village cricket um, helped help someone uh, to to get through his coronavirus experience. There you go, Seb. Thank you very much for your support, and of course, uh, anyone else that watches and comments and likes what we do, we really really do appreciate it. Absolutely, we do. Thank you very much. One of the great things about Sarnaset is we're a big big family club. We've got a lot of sort of fathers and sons and fathers and daughters. And, um, and so, you know, we, we, we thought that um, uh, we would uh, have a sort of father and son bowl off in the back garden. Uh, me and Jalen started it. The challenge was that uh, he had to survive an over of my bowling. It was a, it was a wet, wet track. We've had big arguments about whether he was actually out on the last ball. So uh, have a look at this and um, uh, you can see it now. And um, yeah, yeah. Tell us, what, what do you think? He wasn't hitting it. So... The field wouldn't be out, so um, I'm afraid I think he was caught at mid-wicket. Uh, so we've got a challenge on here that I've got to face an over of his off-spin. Um, obviously, I've got my umbrella hat on because it's raining, but um, we're going to give it a go. Let's see how it happens. Oh, I'll pitch one in here. Guys, that just about wraps us up, I think. And I do like a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, revived Silly Point. We've certainly enjoyed recording it. I hope that you enjoyed watching it. Um, as always, comment below, email, get in contact with us. We love hearing from all of you. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's great fun. We know there's no live cricket out there, only to be played or to be watched. So hopefully we're mm. filling that void for you in some way. Right, Dan. Top work. Stay okay. safe, everyone. Thanks again for watching. Peace out. Indeed. Cheers.
Oh yes, Yay! and Harry. <laughs> That's gone for four. Dell's going to be livid. Oh, look at Dell. Oh, a double teapot. A double teapot from Dell. That's magnificent. Ooh, 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 ooh.